Hi everyone. Today we are going to study the CSMA protocol which is also known as Carrier Sense Multiple Access Protocol. In short, it is known as CSMA. So what is this CSMA or Carrier Sense Multiple Access Protocol? So the protocols in which stations listen for a carrier or the transmission medium and then act accordingly are called carrier sense protocols. So any such protocol in which the station first senses or listens for a carrier, whether it is busy or free and then acts accordingly and then transmits accordingly, any such protocols are known as carrier sense protocols. Now, there are various versions of these carrier sense protocols or which we call the carrier sense multiple access protocol or the CSMA. So, what are the versions of the CSMA? The first version is the one persistent CSMA. What is one persistent CSMA? When a station has data to send, it first listens to the channel to see if anyone else is transmitting at that moment or not right so a station there is a station now this station wants to send data how will it send the data of course through a transmission channel so first of all it should know that whether that transmission channel is free or not because you cannot transmit data through a transmission channel which is already carrying some data so the first thing that that station does when it has to send a data is that it will listen to the channel or it senses the channel to find out if anyone else is transmitting at that moment. Now, if the channel is busy, that means if it is carrying someone, some other station's data, the station waits until the ch channel becomes idle. When the station detects an idle channel, in that case, it transmits a frame. Now, even after sensing the channel and finding it free and then sending a frame even after that if a collision occurs in that case the station will wait for a random amount of time and start all over again say for example the station sent its data and then a collision occurred in that case the station will not immediately again send its frame or data in that case it will wait for a random amount of time and then retransmits the same frame again Okay, now this protocol is called one persistent CSMA. Why? Because the station transmits with the probability of one when it finds the channel idle. Right? So that is the reason it is known as one persistent CSMA. Now the propagation delay. What is propagation delay? Propagation delay is the delay which takes for the transmission of data from the sender to the receiver. So if the propagation delay here has an important effect on the performance of the protocol. How? Let's see. Now there is a small chance that just after a station begins sending, another station will become ready to send and sends the channel, right? Now if the first station signal has not yet reached the second one, the latter will sense an ideal channel and will also begin sending right if the first station sends a signal and its signal has not received reached the second station through the communication medium so in that case the second station will sense that the channel is idle and then when it finds the channel idle it will also begin sending so what happens in that case it results in a collision because of transmission from both the sides so the longer the propagation delay, the more important this effect becomes. So the longer it takes for the data or frame to transmit from one station to another, the more important this effect will become and then the worse will be the performance of the protocol, right? Because then there will be more number of protocols, uh, sorry, more number of collisions as the propagation delay would be large. And if the propagation delay is smaller, then there would be lesser collisions. Now, even if the propagation delay is zero, now if we assume that there is no propagation delay, the uh, data or the frame reaches to the receiver on time, then there will still be collisions, right? How? If two stations become ready in the middle of the third station's transmission, 
both will wait politely until the transmission ends right now if there are two stations which are willing to transmit data but then they find that the trans uh, carrier or the transmission medium is already carrying a third station's data of course in that case those two stations will wait politely until when until the transmission ends and then when they find that the transmission has ended both will begin transmitting exactly simultaneously because the one uh, one station does not know that the second station is also willing to send or it is sending at the same time they can only sense the channel when it is carrying the data but before it is carrying data it cannot sense whether any other station is also sending at the same time or not so in that case when the uh, transmission medium or the carrier has transmitted the third station's data then both the station 1 and station 2 which were waiting for this transmission to be complete what will they do they will begin transmitting exactly simultaneously unaware of the fact that both of them are transmitting at the same time and hence this will result in a collision so even in the case even in a scenario where there is a zero propagation delay there can be chances of collision because of this particular scenario so even so this protocol is far better than pure aloha which we have already studied why because both stations have the decency to at least stop from interfering with the third station's frame unlike aloha where it did not sense the channel this uh, irrespective of the fact whether the channel was already sent transmitting some other station's data or not at least in this case the other uh, other two stations or the other station has the decency to sense the channel and wait for that particular period of time when it is transmitting some other station's data so still the performance is far better than pure aloha which we have studied earlier right now this approach leads to higher performance than pure aloha and slotted aloha because it is sensing the channel before transmitting the data so number of collisions whatsoever may be would at least be lesser than pure aloha and slotted aloha for sure and hence the performance of one persistent csma would be comparatively better than pure aloha and slotted aloha okay now moving on to the second version of csma or carrier sense multiple access is your non persistent csma now what is this non persistent csma in this protocol a conscious attempt is made to be less greedy than in one persistent csma now it says that a conscious attempt is made to be less greedy than the one persistent csma which we have just started how let's see before sending the station senses a channel fine if no one else is sending station begins doing so itself that is again fine this is what happened in one persistent csma also but then what is the difference it says however if a channel is already in use the station waits a random period of time and then again senses the channel so if the station finds that the channel is already in use then it will wait for some period of time for some random period of time and after then that it will again attempt a delivery and of course before it attempting delivery it will sense the communication channel so consequently this protocol leads to better channel utilization but longer delays than one persistent csma why because in case of this non persistent csma it is waiting for a random amount of time now it may happen that when the uh, station sends the channel it was busy and immediately after that it became free but since the station waited for a random amount of time so for that particular time this channel was also free and the station was also not sending the data so this protocol leads to longer delays than one persistent csma because the channel is because the stations are waiting for a random amount of time now let's look at the third version of the csma which is the p persistent csma when a station becomes ready to send in case of p persistent csma when a station becomes ready to send it senses the channel now if the channel is idle station transmits with a probability p right station would transmit data with a probability p when the channel is idle p could be any number probability 1 2 3 so with the probability q equals to 1 minus p 
when p is the probability of trans successful transmission obviously this uh, probability of unsuccessful transmission would be 1 minus v p so if the channel is idle and if the station transmits with the probability p then with the probability q which is equal to 1 minus p it defers until the next slot right it defers means it it refrains itself from sending the frame until the next available slot if that slot is also idle it either transmits or defers again if the again if again the next slot is also idle and it gets to transmit then again it is upon the station it will either transmit or defer again with the probability p and q right so this process is repeated until either the frame has been transmitted or another station has begun transmitting right and in the latter case that is when another station has begun transmitting the unlucky station which did not get to transmit acts as if there was a collision so that means what happens when there is when there is a collision the station waits for a random amount of time so similarly here also in this case when the station which could not transmit acts as if there was a collision that means it waits for a random amount of time and then starts all over again to sense the channel and if it is idle then begin transmitting either with the probability p or q equals to 1 minus p so these are all the versions of the csma that is carrier sense multiple access